Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to discuss trig substitution for Calculus 2, specifically the advanced integral portion of the course. So first I want to talk about when you need to use trig substitution. And usually it's when you see one of the three forms in an integral. You'll either see 1 minus x squared, x squared plus 1, or 1 plus x squared, because that's the same thing, or you see x squared minus 1. Whenever you see one of these three forms, you're going to use trig substitution most of the time. Now, specifically, if you see 1 minus x squared, we call that the sine x form. In other words, you'd set x equal to sine theta for if you have x squared plus 1 or 1 plus x squared, that is the substitution x equals tangent theta and then the last one x squared minus one that will be the x equals secant theta case you'll notice that there's no formula for cosine cosecant or cotangent that's because we don't need them we can do every trig substitution problem with just these three so that's what we're going to do by the way another note i want to make all of these formulas you see here have either one minus or one plus some number and that's very important that this is a one so what I'm saying is if, for instance, I have, let's say, 9 minus x squared, well, that's not going to fly. I would have to factor out the 9, so that's 1 minus x squared over 9. And that's how you'd write that, but this is still not great. You'd actually want to transform x squared over 9. You'd want to transform it into x over 3 quantity squared, and that's going to allow you to actually do the trig substitution. So I know it's a small thing. I know it can get annoying you can forget it but you need it so we're gonna pay attention to it in these problems coming up so let's jump into our first problem we have the integral of 1 over x squared square root of 1 minus x squared dx the first reason I know why this is trig substitution I guess first I would probably try a u substitution with the 1 minus x squared if you try that you'll find out pretty quickly that that's not going to work with the u substitution so it's not that strategy then i say hey this is one minus x squared so i can probably do a trig substitution which we can and we will the other thing i want to say is that since it's already a one here and this is just x squared we are good to go for the trig substitution this is simply going to be the form with sine theta in it so i'm going to write x equals sine theta just like that the next thing you do is you need to find the derivative of this. The derivative of x being 1 dx, and where'd the dx come from? I mean, it's just something we say, you know, when you take the derivative of x, you put dx at the end. We're going to do the same thing with the sine theta. We're going to put a d theta at the end of that as well. And that's just something we do in these trig substitution problems. So the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, and as promised, I'll put a d theta at the end of there. Now. One thing I want to say is that if this were a u substitution problem, you would solve d theta as the next step. But we're not going to do that because notice we just want to plug in for dx and we're already solved for dx. So trig substitution in that regard is actually easier than u substitution. So now I'm going to plug in everything I see here. I've got the integral, 1 in the numerator, divided by x squared. So x is sine theta. That's going to be sine squared theta or sine theta squared times the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta and then times dx which we just said was cosine theta d theta so looking at what i've got here it looks like i need to start simplifying now 1 minus sine squared theta is a trig identity it's cosine squared theta and by the way the reason why we do these trig substitutions is specifically to get a trig identity. I guess it's important to know the trig identities, which I'll write down just really fast here. So we have one minus cosine squared theta, which is sine squared theta. You have one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. We would say these are part of the same family because you've used them for the same problem. Then you have one plus tangent squared theta, which would be equal to secant squared theta of course that's the same thing as tangent squared theta plus one that's also secant squared theta and then we have secant squared theta minus one equals tangent squared theta so 
These first two you would use for the sine theta trig substitution. This middle one you would use for the tangent theta substitution. And the last one you would use for the secant theta substitution. So these are the trig identities we need to know going into today. So now back to the problem. I just said one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. Let me rewrite that. And now what I wanna say is the square root of anything squared is just, you know, they cancel each other out. So that means we have the integral of one over sine squared theta. Now the square root and the squared cancel. So it's cosine theta, just cosine theta times cosine theta d theta. And this is when you say, hey, the cosines are gonna cancel out here. That's nice. So we're just going to get 1 over sine squared theta d theta, which if you don't know this integral, that's fine. You need to remember that 1 over sine is the same thing as cosecant. So this is really the integral of cosecant squared theta d theta. And this integral we do know. And if you don't know it, remember what is the derivative of cotangent? Well, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared theta. And so since I gave you cosecant squared theta and the integral is the opposite of the derivative, the answer is just going to be negative cotangent theta and you can put plus C. Now I need to stop here because this is not the final answer. The final answer needs to have X in it. Right now we have theta. So the last step in any of these trig substitution problems is to simply plug back in for theta. Now, if you remember way back up here, we said X equals sine theta. So that's what we're going to use to find out what theta is. The one thing I'm gonna tell you is that you need to construct a triangle whenever you have like cotangent theta, sine theta, tangent theta, or whatever in your final answer. And what I mean by setting up the triangle is I'm literally going to draw a triangle, a right triangle with some angle theta here, and x equals sine theta. Now, if I remember correctly, sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and this is technically, even though the one is invisible, this is technically x over one. In other words, the opposite leg is x and the hypotenuse is one. And you do this just about every time for trig substitution, something like this. Now we want the cotangent and cotangent is equal to the adjacent over the opposite. And it looks like the adjacent leg is down here. I don't know it. I can solve for it using Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in other words, when I do it correctly, a squared plus x squared equals one squared, and I solve for a, I'm gonna get a equals the square root of one minus x squared, which should look familiar to you because that showed up in the original problem right here. And by the way, if you do your trig substitution properly, that should always happen. That should always happen. So since we went the adjacent over the opposite, it looks like my final answer is negative. The adjacent side is one minus x squared. The opposite side is x plus c. And we're done this problem. So that's it for the first trig substitution problem. And by the way, you always make this triangle as the last step unless, unless you only have theta as your final answer with no sine, cosine, tangent, anything in front of it. When you have this, I'll tell you what to do in the very next problem. So the next one we have, it's the integral of one over four plus x squared dx. Once again, this is gonna be a trig substitution form because I see some number plus x squared. And if you try u substitution, it's not gonna work. So the problem is I would love to say this is the tangent theta form, only one problem. That's not a one there. Now I warned you this would happen. Do you remember what I said you should do? Of course you don't remember. Why would I trust you to do anything? So what you do is you rewrite it as the integral of one divided by, we're gonna pull out the four. And what that means is you're gonna write four parentheses, one plus x squared over four. Now, first of all, this does work. It's legal, you're allowed to do it because if you distribute this four to both terms, you get back here. And the reason why do we want to do it? Well, because that's a one now and we need that to be a one. And then if you remember, I said that this isn't good either because you need to rewrite the x squared over four. And I'm gonna rewrite it like this. I'm gonna rewrite it as x over two quantity squared. So pretty much you always just take the square root of whatever's inside there and then write it as a squared on the outside. So that's what we're doing there. Now, finally, 
I get to use the tangent theta form, except I'm not gonna write x equals tangent theta because I don't have x. I have x over two. So that's what I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write x over two equals tangent theta. I'm also gonna just solve this for x real quick by multiplying both sides by two, and it looks like I get x equals two tangent theta. And the reason why I would want to do that is because now when I take the derivative, this is super easy, derivative of x is dx again, and the derivative of two tangent theta is gonna be two secant squared theta d theta. Always put d theta at the end there. So now I'm gonna start plugging in. I've got the integral. Well, actually, see that four in the denominator? I can just pull that in front of the integral as a one fourth. So one fourth integral of one over, now it's just one plus x over two squared. So x over two is tangent. That just makes it tangent squared theta with no other coefficients there. Now the dx I still have to replace with two secant squared theta, d theta. And now I can start simplifying. So what I was saying is this is the secant squared theta trig identity. It looks like this will re reduce to one fourth integral of one over secant squared theta times two secant squared theta d theta. I would say that the secant squareds cancel, the two can be moved out in front, two times one fourth is one half. It looks like I have one half the integral of nothing, like just one d theta. And that's fine, because we know the integral of one. The integral of one is normally x, but since we want it in terms of theta, the answer is one half times theta, and you can write plus c. So again, the integral of one is just x, but in this case it's theta, the one half coefficient out in front. And then the last thing we do is construct the triangle. I'm actually not going to construct the triangle for this time because I don't have sine theta to cosine theta, anything in front of it. I just have theta. So what I'm gonna do instead is, if I remember back up here, x over two equals tangent theta, x over two equals tangent theta. Well, for this one, I just need to solve for theta which involves taking the arc tangent of both sides. Theta equals the arc tangent of x over two, and that's gonna be part of my final answer. One half arc tangent of x over two plus c. There's my final answer. Now, one more time, why did I do this strategy for this one and not for the last one? It's because I didn't have sine, cosine, or tangent out in front. If I did, let's say I did have sine theta out in front, well, that's when I would construct the triangle, right triangle, angle theta, tangent is x over two. I know tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which would mean the opposite is x and the adjacent is two. And this hypotenuse would be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in other words, I'd get the square root of four plus x squared. And if I scroll up, I know we don't have the square root, but as I said before, you will always see this look very similar to this, your missing side of your triangle you constructed. But again, we didn't have to do that because there was no sine, cosine, tangent, anything in front of the theta. So that's it for the second one. Now let's just look at one more. I have the integral of numerator, 5x, denominator, the square root of 25x squared minus one dx. As you can imagine, this one is probably gonna be the secant form because number one, it's x squared minus one, and also because it's the only one we didn't do yet, so it makes sense that we finish it off with this one. By the way, I do wanna mention real quick that yes, this one actually can just be a simple u substitution with u equals 25x squared minus one, but since this is the trig substitution lesson, I wanna use trig substitution for this one. So the first thing I'm gonna say is 25x squared minus one, that's already a one there. So if the first thing I do is factor out the 25 to write it as x squared minus one over 25, this is horribly wrong because now this isn't a one anymore. So I don't factor out the 25 for this one. So what should I do instead? Well, that's still not good because I need to take the square root of everything there. What I'm trying to say is if I rewrite it, I get the integral of five x over the square root of quantity five x squared minus one. So I still have to do that part. Now I'm gonna say, well, since this is the secant form, x equals secant theta, except it's not x, still it's five x because that was in my parentheses here for the squared. I wanna then solve for x. 
So there's two ways you can do this. The first way is you can say x equals secant theta over 5. I think this is going to be confusing for you if you write it that way. So instead, I'm just going to write it the better way, 1 fifth secant theta. Both ways will work. This way is just nicer. So now when I take the derivative, derivative of x is still dx, and it will always be dx if you just solve for x first like we have been doing. On the right side, you get 1 fifth derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta, and then d theta. So that's the dx I'm going to plug in for this integral. So now let's start plugging in here. I'm going to get the integral of numerator is going to be 5x is the secant theta, so secant theta in the numerator. Denominator is going to be the square root of 5x, again with secant theta, so secant squared theta minus 1. Again, this should always happen that you just get the normal trig identity when you do it right. And then dx is getting replaced with 1 fifth secant theta tangent theta d theta. And so now I need to start simplifying. This denominator here can be rewritten as tangent squared theta because of the trig identity. So then I'll have this secant theta over square root of tangent squared theta times 1 fifth secant theta tangent theta d theta. The square root of tangent theta squared, those will cancel, just leaving me with a tangent theta in the denominator. And now we can really start simplifying. So then I would say that the tangent theta and tangent theta cancels out. This 1 fifth can be rewritten out in front of my integral. And the secant theta here and here combine to make secant squared theta d theta. Now I do know this integral. I know the integral of secant squared theta because remember the derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta. And since integrals are the opposite of the derivative, the integral is just going to be tangent theta. So 1 fifth tangent theta plus c. There's my second to final answer. Now I need to do the triangle. Again, I need the triangle because it's tangent theta. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct my triangle here. And I need to remember that originally my trig substitution was 5x equals secant theta. 5x equals secant theta. Secant, remember, is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And really, this is written as 5x divided by 1. So the hypotenuse is 5x. The adjacent is 1. If I want my other leg, then I need to say 1 squared plus b squared equals 5x squared. If I solve for that, I'm going to get the square root of 25x squared minus 1, which if you look back at the original problem, it had that in there. So that's a very good sign. And since I want the tangent theta, and tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, it looks like my final answer is going to be numerator, square root of 25x squared minus 1, denominator, 1. Don't forget the 1 fifth out in front, plus c. So I'm just going to write this a little bit nicer. Square root of 25x squared minus 1 over 5 plus c. This cannot be reduced. We are done. So that's how we do trig substitution problems. You can find a ton more out there online. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Take care, and bye-bye.